Yo, I done six shows in a row, so my voice is hurting. Fans wanna hear what you're in person. Boy, oi. She want a man from Brom, but she settled with a boy from Burton. I still see feds on a block. Welcome back to another episode of The Beard Necessities. My name is Adam, you're tuned into The Facial Foods, and on today's episode, I'm going to be discussing peppermint oil again, and this time looking at whether or not it's a DHT blocker. Now, there isn't a set one study that says that peppermint essential oil is a DHT blocker or not, but what I'm going to do is use logic and reasoning and a bunch of other studies to make a foundation for my viewpoint on this topic. Now it's my initial conclusion that peppermint oil isn't a DHT blocker and the reason for this is as follows. So it might be beneficial to actually start looking at what peppermint oil consists of. Now its main components are methanol which is 40.7% and methanone at 23.4%. There are smaller quantities of other components but the main one that I'm going to mention is limonene. I'll put the rest of the components down in the description as well. Now let's talk about rose marinic acid. Now it is within the peppermint plant at four times the concentration than it is within the rosemary plant. And we do know that rosemary is a strong DHT blocker, but I'll get to that a little bit later on. What we do need to bear in mind is that rosemarinic acid is a derivative of caffeic acid, which we know is a DHT blocker. I'm yet to find anything credible out there and trusted that actually shows that rosemarinic acid is part of peppermint essential oil. And if it is, it isn't mentioned in the components, which would lead me to believe that it's in such small quantities that it isn't going to have a detrimental effect. Now, usually when people talk about peppermint being a DHT blocker, it's because of a study that was done um, on women and showing the anti-androgenic effects of peppermint teas, particularly spearmint tea. Uh, we do know that spearmint is definitely a DHT blocker, but in this case, we're just talking about the actual teas themselves. Peppermint tea was shown to have anti androgenic effects when consumed but we do need to keep in mind that the same can be said about caffeine now caffeine actually when consumed increases your dht levels but when you apply it topically it reduces your dht so it actually inhibits 5-al reductase which is the enzyme that converts testosterone to dht so the same product can have polarizing effects dependent on how you actually consume or use it in fact, another example of polarizing effects is something like zinc. If you're zinc deficient, you generally will have lower levels of DHT. But if you have too much zinc, it actually starts to inhibit DHT production. So that's the same product taken in the same way that can have different effects depending on the amount of consumption. And that's going to be important later on in this video. Remember that I mentioned about limonene. Now, limonene is one of the components of peppermint essential oil. And I did a little bit of research into it and I found out that there's two types. There is L-limonene and D-limonene. Now, D-limonene, there was a patent filed in 1991 for its effects as an anti-androgenic. So one could assume that it's a DHT blocker. Couldn't find any studies to back it up, only the patent that was filed all the way back in 1991. L-limonene, there's some things on articles, but they're not sourced, so it's hard to say. There doesn't appear to be any conclusive evidence that it is a DHT blocker. However, there was also another study done on peppermint essential oil that showed that the levels of limonene actually within the peppermint essential oils were relatively quite low. And this was done in Tasmania. However, the same could generally be said geographically around the world. Um, I'm making a logical assumption there. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a great deal of information on what type of limonene is actually within the peppermint essential oil. But again, there isn't actually any hard conclusive evidence that it does inhibit 5-AL reductase and therefore D. HT that was just based on a patent that was filed but we do need to look again at rosemarinic acid now that was mentioned before as it does exist at four times the quantity within the peppermint plant as opposed to rosemary so you're probably wondering why can't I use rosemary oil then because we're always saying how bad rosemary oil is and that's because you're not diluting the rosemary oil so actually in terms of volume there's much more rosemarinic acid that could potentially be within it if it is in peppermint essential oil, it's in such trace amounts because it's not even mentioned within the components. So I personally don't think that it's anything to be worried about. And that brings me on nicely to my final point. So we're going to look at quantities. Now, if you have 100% pure essential peppermint oil, and you imagine that the limonene, which might or might not be a DHT blocker, is in 
really low amounts anyway, and rosmarinic acid isn't really even proven to be within it. If it's already at low amounts of the 100%, imagine when we dilute it to 5%, it's really not going to have that much of an effect on it. And the reason I say that is because of something like shea butter. Now shea butter is a DHT blocker, but at levels lower than 40% within a product, it's really not going to have that much of an impact on you. Over 40%, there's enough there that it's probably going to start to have an impact on you. So that's my opinion, guys. That's my conclusion based on what I feel is scientific fact. Um, and obviously there's some speculation on my part from looking at some of the evidence and the way I've interpreted it. Um, please do drop me uh, a comment if you feel like you disagree or if you have any questions. Um, all the links to the studies are in the description as well. Uh, I'd really appreciate if you like and subscribe as well. And I'll see you again on Friday for Facial Foods Friday. Cheers. Now for the most interesting and perhaps significant element of the study, it found that that 10 milligram dosage of boron taken daily actually increased the levels of dihydrotestosterone, or DHT for short, within our system. 